Hello, my name is Sanya Bojinovic and I'm your English teacher today. Today we are learning about earthquakes. By the end of today's lesson you will understand a short text about earthquakes when you read it and listen to it. You will be able to interpret information about earthquakes from different sources and you will talk about how to act responsibly uh, during the earthquake. For this lesson you will need some equipment. You will need your pencil and your notebook and you will also need a tablet, laptop or your mobile phone with the internet connection. If you have all that equipment you are ready for our lesson. We will start with a list of vocabulary. We will need this vocabulary for later on for the task to talk about earthquakes. And we will check at the beginning if you know some of these words. I'm sure you know most of these words. Maybe some of you know all of these words. I will read them aloud and you will check if you know them and you will copy them all into your notebook to use them later for your final task. Let's start. Destructive, ground, underground, shock, aftershock, seismic wave, geological forces, shake, move, seismologist, epicenter, landslide, ground rupture, fire, tsunami. Do you know some of these words? Most of these words? All of them? Earthquakes are destructive, they destroy. The activity happens both underground and on the ground. There is the main shock and a series of aftershocks. It's caused by geological forces that work. There are seismic waves. It all starts from the epicenter and the scientists are called seismologists. The earth is shaking and moving and you can see landslides when the land moves down slopes, ruptures in the ground, fires, tsunamis. Tsunamis are those great waves that we cannot see uh, in Croatia, almost never in Croatia, but all around the world and they are very dangerous. So that's the vocabulary to start with. And what are we going to do with that vocabulary? If you are not watching this on TV, but working in front of your computer, you can pause the video and decide how to copy that vocabulary on paper or digitally. If you work on paper, you can divide the page in your notebook into three parts, because we will talk about the earthquake, the disaster, what happens. Then we will talk about people, what people do. And we will pe talk about how we feel. So you need three, at least three categories to put words into. Or you can decide to create a mind map. If you don't like writing your vocabulary into your notebook, you can decide to create a mind map. And it can be a digital mind map. Here are four different, four different digital tools easy to use and free. You can use any of them to create beautiful mind maps that will help you learn vocabulary that you, are, uh, that you need to talk and to write about this topic. When we start learning about the topic, we start from the question what we really want to know about that topic. So if you are watching this video in front of your computer, you can pause this video and think about this. What would you like to learn about earthquakes? What is it that you would like to know more about? If you are watching this on television, I will offer you three questions. Look at my questions. The verb is missing in every one of them. And what is the form of the verb in all of them? The passive voice is what you need to use here. Why? The size of an earthquake measure. Who measures it? The scientists. We named them on the previous slide. But are we talking about them? The people who do that activity? No. We are talking about the object, about the earthquake. 
That's why we need the passive. People expect to do. Passive again. Earthquakes predict. Are earthquakes predicting anything? No. We are predicting them. So they are the object. You need the passive in all three of these sentences. You can pause this video and complete the sentences. Copy them into your notebook. Here are the sentences. And my questions are How is the size of an earthquake measured? What are people expected to do? Can earthquakes be predicted? Do you know the answers to these questions? If you don't, let's learn. Here is a piece of news. I will read the short text for you and your task is to think about which of the words in the text are the examples of the passive voice and why they are there. Why passive? Then you will find, recognize the words which describe earthquakes. If you are ready, here is the news. There has been a magnitude 5.5 earthquake in Zagreb. Many buildings are thought to be unfit for living. Some buildings will have to be demolished. Fortunately, no casualties have been reported. People are warned to boil drinking water and not to walk near buildings. Underline the verbs in the passive voice. If you are working in front of your computer, if you are watching, just find them in the text. The words that describe earthquakes, here. The verbs are buildings are thought to be, buildings will have to be demolished, casualties have been reported, and people are warned to boil water and not to walk. And the words are magnitude of the earthquake. Do you know what that is? The magnitude of the earthquake is how strong, how, how dangerous it is for people and property. Buildings are unfit for living. People cannot live there. They will have to be demolished for that reason. And those people who live in the properties, in the buildings, unfit for living, that have to be demolished, usually suffer from, wounds, sometimes die during the earthquake. They are casualties. And after the earthquake, it's dangerous to assume that water is clean, because it usually isn't. Or to walk near buildings, because something can fall onto your head and kill you or hurt you. How is the size of an earthquake measured? That was one of the questions. When I mentioned in the first sentence that the magnitude of the earthquake was 5.5, that was which of these scales? That was Richter scale. And there are also many other scales. These three are the most important. If you are interested in answering the question, you can research some more about these three and others and answer the question for yourself. What are people expected to do? I'm sure you have learned a lot from your parents, from your teachers. And if you are watching this video in front of your computer, you can pause the video and make your list. What have you learned so far? What are you expected to do if you feel the ground shaking, moving, and you know that's the earthquake? What are you expected to do? Stand under the door frame, somewhere safe or safer if you're indoors. Put your arms over your head to protect your head and your neck. Stay away from windows, mirrors, anything that can break and hurt you. 
boil drinking water afterwards clean up because there will be a lot of debris now we are going to watch a video it's a very short video the source is the american federal emergency management agency and that's a video that will give you instructions which are more or less the same or similar to those that you have already learned your task is to listen carefully and watch the video to hear if your ideas are mentioned and then if you hear something new add to your list later on you will be able to access this this poster this is the poster by the same agency and the link that you uh, where you will find this poster is bitly that's the shortened link uh, I wanted it to be easy to remember for you or to copy now. Bitly, Earthquakes, F-E-M-A, that's the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And that poster repeats the same information uh, which you will find in the video, only you will uh, be able to focus on the sentences uh, written sentences maybe it will be easier for you to learn from the poster so you decide now you'll watch the video if you like you can read from the poster you can keep on learning when the earth shakes the ground moves and things start to fall you'll ask yourself how prepared or unprepared are you? Have you removed objects from over the bed and over your head? Anchored your possessions securely to the wall. It won't be a pain, and you're not doing it in vain. Are your emergency kits packed? What about your family, your friends? Do they know what to do, how to get in touch, and where to meet? Do you know how to drop, cover, and hold on? Covering your head and neck. What if you're outside? Or in a car? After the shaking stops, look around. Figure out what to do. Stay away from damaged areas. Turn on a radio. Reach out for help. And if you're trapped, do not move about. Stay calm. Only shout as a last resort. Once everything and everyone is safe, get prepared. An aftershock could be on its way. So before the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, get prepared. Make a plan. Practice what you know, because an earthquake can happen anytime, anywhere. You never know. You never know. That's why it's very important to be ready and to practice. What should you put in an emergency kit? You've heard about it during the video. And I'm sure you have some ideas. If you are watching this video in front of your computer, make your list, pause the video and then go on. First aid kit. Some water bottled water, canned or dried food in case you have to stay out for some longer time, flashlight, charging devices for your mobile phone or other devices, some tissues, hand sanitizer, and there will be some more things you need. If you have read from the poster that I um, suggested you try reading after this lesson you will be uh, familiar with the picture on the right hand side it says that if an earthquake happens you should be able to follow the procedure drop onto the ground cover your head and your neck hold on stay somewhere safe look at the person under a table where it's safer than anywhere around until the danger is over and then there are instructions what to do if you are in your car driving somewhere with your parents family 
pull over and don't go out, stay inside. If you're in your bed, stay there, just cover your head, your neck. If you're outdoors, don't try to get inside, stay outdoors, just be careful not to be near a building. If you are in the house, don't get in a doorway, don't try the stairs, don't run outside, stay where you are and try to be safe. Your speaking task is to, you will talk for a minute and your task is to, to explain the basic procedures. What should you do in case of an earthquake? While uh, talking about the procedures, use three or more verbs in the passive voice to show that you have learned your grammar. Use five or more expressions from this lesson to prove that you have learned some vocabulary. And uh, it's a nice idea to create a poster. And that poster will help you summarize your ideas and it will serve as a reminder. And I have also created a rubric for you. And this rubric will help you organize your, right, your speaking and not forget any important parts of it. So when you prepare your speech, remember to include five or more facts. Remember to include some new vocabulary. Remember to put some verbs into the passive voice. And remember to look at your poster because it will help you cover all that you have planned. Our final activity is an escape room. It's a fun activity. I'm sure you have learned enough to unlock all the five locks that there are in that escape and find the way out when the earthquake starts. Have fun and that's the end of today's lesson. Goodbye until next time.